my ears. So we mix the whole thing in afterwards? Hi, lady. Yeah, you're done. You can pour the whole thing okay. in. Okay. 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 Spreadability is really, um, it has to work well together. You know, formulas, when you layer something, they have to blend into each other. They have to be homogeneously working together. So as a base, I always say that it's very important to use an eyeshadow base. You know what I mean? Like when it's too wet, then the pigments just stick to it. It's like when you wet a, a dry or matte eyeshadow, it looks like a stain and you cannot blend it anymore. So this can happen to every eyeshadow if the base underneath is too wet and too dewy. That's why I know most of the um, makeup artists or influencers want enough to the skin. And then it looks like dead, you know, like diffused. and doesn't look bright and vibrant. So I kind of developed a formula for the eyeshadow base that it's like an in-between semi-matte finish. Okay. So I need another one. It's not good for the earth, so I will use it again. Let's move this thing over here, thank you. Good, so uh, I will start with a dense but fluffy brush. Picking up, whoops, true, which is a greenish, like a brownish green or greenish brown eyeshadow with the cream powder formula it's really super creamy and um, I'm just kind of pressing this but at the same time also blending onto the outer corner and the inner corner I know that this look doesn't seem to be very wearable but I want to show you something really interesting a little bit of technique color combination something interesting uh, for wearable looks, you can also look at my YouTube videos. Um, I hope they're wearable enough, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying not to make it too complicated. Okay, and then with a little bit more fluffier brush, I'm picking up symbol. Is it symbol? Yeah. This is also the cream powder formula. This is super, super pigmented. You know that the cream powder formulas, many times they look a little bit darker in the pan than when you're actually using it because it's a wet powder. And wet powders, they look always darker. Okay, and then on the skin, but you can get to this darkness. I can just pick it up like this and I can use it that way on the skin too. But when you diffuse it, you can just get lighter and lighter. So I picked up just a little bit of pigment. I don't want it to be too dark right now. And this I'm placing into the crease. Now, you know, I wanted to uh, tell you something about where to place shades for the crease. Some of this is kind of different because there are people, when they close their eyes, they don't see when, sorry, when they open their eyes, they don't see any crease, right? When the, when the eyes are kind of hooded or semi-hooded, you just see a fold. It's different than her eye. Nicole's eye, you can really see above the fold if you want to create a crease, you know, because then, and you have to do it while your eye is open. You have to check that this darker color is placed above the fold, and then you can blend it upwards and this will open up the eye, it will also lift up the hooded. And um, something else I wanted to talk about today is that, for example, Nicole's eye space, her lid, from her eyelash line. From, so this always gives like a feeling, I can feel, I have a lot of space, I can do like paintings over them. No, don't do that, because then it looks like a painting, it doesn't look like really an eye that is beautifully made up and the eye just is, this, you know, like a secondary <laughs> instead of the main. Makeup is supposed to complement the eyes, and the eyes have to look stunning. The makeup can be beautiful, but it 
the, the job of makeup is actually to make us look beautiful. And then when you're just filling up, this is what you told me yesterday, that's why I thought about talking about it. What did you say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, she didn't know exactly how much you can use, you know? And when you have... Yes. So what I told her actually is that we always have to consider the fold and uh, this is actually the size we have to consider because if we just fill in everything up until the brow, for what? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. We just look, I mean drag queen looks are nice if you want to look like a drag queen, but if you don't, just you have to consider only your fold or crease and this is it. And if the brow, for example, is here, let it be there. We don't have to get up to her. <laughs> she can stay there. Okay, this this kind of a mod mood, like 60s. Okay, and now we're going to blend it. Um, firstly, I'm taking Rhizome. Yes, I remember the shades. Yes, I didn't remember the shades at all. Nothing. Even though I'm the one that I'm responsible for the, sh for the names usually. No comments. <laughs> okay, so I'm blending this up. Really following the natural shape of the crease. If you do that, I mean following the natural shape of the crease, then you can go crazy, a little bit more crazy than usual. It will always look good. It will never look really too much. I mean, it depends because sometimes it doesn't fit their personality, but then you can maybe add some color in between the lashes, you know, the lash line, the lower lash line, or just a dot in the inner corner or just the center of your lid just to have a little bit of fun. Um, this is, I mean, everybody has to feel comfortable with, you're welcome. <laughs> Going to diffuse it a little bit more with, hello, rope. <laughs> I don't remember why I called it rope. <laughs> transition okay yeah now I have to connect here something right there's like a hole or something so I'm adding a little bit more of true Hey Amores, thank you so much for watching this video.